Hello guys, Zarnik here. I'm here to uh, bring you a Hex Alpha uh, game match here. I'm playing a blue tempo deck uh, with this champion here that gives all my guys some flying. This hand looks really good. We're playing against some sort of blue deck. Uh, so right off the bat, if you're unfamiliar with Hex, Hex is a online only trading card game. Uh, which at first seems unfortunate because if you've ever played a trading card game physically having the cards is fun uh, but as you soon realize really going around organizing the cards and all that stuff becomes very annoying so there's a lot of huge benefits to playing uh, a computer based trading card game and I'm playing this deck because it really highlights most of those because this is a tempo deck and so my goal with this deck is to play a bunch of cards, a bunch of troops that do two things at once. And this guy's a great example. So my one drop here is the Ancestor's Chosen. And what he does is at the start of my turn he creates two of these Spectres and shuffles into my deck. Oh, my opponent is playing the exact same card, so this is going to get very interesting very fast. So what these Spectres are is they are two two flying uh, specters and they cost one and when you play them you get to draw a card uh, so they really don't take up any space in your deck because they draw a card when you play it so it replaces itself uh, and it only costs one and it's a 2-2 and it flies so it's really good and so now we're going to see basically who has to draw more of these and so what I'll be doing is I will basically be attacking and I'll be playing creatures that will do other things so it's almost like I get to play two cards for one so like for one this is my favorite guy this is Buccaneer uh, he's not only just a 2-2 two, two creature for three but he's also his own bounce spell so he will return a troop to my opponent's hand and then it permanently gets a cost of uh, plus one which also shows you how awesome it is to have a digital card game is that you can have permanent effects like that. Okay, so I feel safe attacking with this guy. Uh, because as valuable as he is, uh, if this guy wants to trade with me, that's fine. Because I really don't want him to have one either. Uh, and the race begins. We have our 20 turn countdown with the Ancestor's Ghost. So I have uh, two Buccaneers, they each will be able to bounce somebody back, which is really good uh, for potential blockers, or it'll basically just return people to his hand, so he has to keep replaying them uh, instead of getting to attack, and it really screws up his mana curve, because then he has to replay a troop that he's already played, and it, the idea is to like kind of get this half a turn ahead, uh, or this kind of like step ahead by using these cards, and really just staying a step ahead until we win. So that's what this guy does. This 5 drop, he's also very good. So he will uh, tap all of my opponent's troops, and they will stay tapped uh, throughout his next turn. So that basically kills a whole turn worth of attacking uh, and blocking from him, which is very good. And this last guy here will permanently make a troop so that it cannot untap, so it cannot ready. And so if you play other card games, you'll have like enchantments or auras or whatever, and they attach to the cards, and they can be destroyed. Because this is a digital card game... Oh, here, this is going to be annoying. Because this is a digital card game... Uh, see, this is now permanent. This is I now permanently cost two. And anyway, yeah, so I was saying, so this would permanently attach to the card. So even if it goes back to his hand, even if it goes to the graveyard, if it goes back into play, it'll still never be able to tap. Okay, so this guy's playing a near identical deck to me. So this is going to get very interesting very fast. Because I'm going to Buccaneer his Buccaneer. So now his Buccaneer will now cost four, which is very annoying. Which, if he gets a land, he might very well play and bounce my Buccaneer. And make my Buccaneer cost four. <coughs> and as you see, when this guy wiggles at the beginning of the turn, it means it's because he's adding those 2-2 uh, two, two flying guys to his deck. 
So I'd very much like to get my instance chosen out. So this is a flock of seagulls. This is a, a zero one flyer, cannot attack, and he never takes combat damage. I hate this card. Um, it just takes up a space in your deck. It's a really good blocker, but I mean against against any like red or black deck, it'll just get burned. Um, and so it'll be fine against my deck, but it'll it, again it only gets to block one thing. I don't like when I don't like having cards in my deck that are not threatening. Actually, how do I undo this? Because I don't want to attack with him. Eh, because now it's just getting blocked. I should I that was a little play mistake. Not paying attention. I should have left him up so I could block his Ancestor Chosen in case he attacked with it. See, now it's just going to get blocked by these stupid seagulls. <sighs> oh well. I do have a way of dealing with these seagulls. So if they get to be really annoying, what I'll do is I'll end up playing this guy who will tap all of his creatures. And then I'm going to next turn I'll play this so that it will uh, never be able to untap. Which means it will never be able to block makes it totally useless. Uh, I'll only do that if he never plays anything that's scary. Oh, I really these stupid frickin' seagulls. I really hate them. I really don't I really don't even think they're very good. But obviously if he beats me with them, uh, joke's on me, right? So again I would have attacked with his ancestor chosen. I'm not gonna block with mine. Uh, I love it too much, so he's missing out on one damage here. Okay. So I would play this guy right now, this Menacing Grok. But then what's going to happen is if he gets a land, so you'll notice that Buccaneer that we bounced has not come back because it now costs four and he's stuck at three. But now if he draws a fourth one, uh, he might Buccaneer this guy back to my hand. Oh, never mind. If he Buccaneers it back to my hand, I'll be able to play it again for six and I'll just tap all of his creatures again. So I don't mind that one bit. So you see, we tap all of his creatures. Good for us. So now we get to exact some revenge on these stupid seagulls. We'll swing it for three. I really think this game is going to come down to whoever draws their uh, ancestral specters out of their deck. Because we both have had this guy on turn one. I'm a turn behind because he bounced mine. Um, but whoever starts drawing them is going to be at a huge advantage with these 2-2 two -two flyers. So here we go. So we might see Buccaneer. Uh, bouncing this Grolk will be a dumb move. So I hope he does it. Oh, we have another freaking Seagull. That's marvelous. I really don't get the appeal of having these things. So like, think of it this way, he could have three creatures out here that could attack me, that could kill me. So the only thing that makes sense is if he's playing these and his deck is kind of like a stall deck, almost like a like a bad control deck, uh, waiting for one of the big blue creatures. Like there is a 6-6 a six, six flyer who can't be hit by uh, opponent spells. So he might be working towards that. We're still... We're still several turns away from that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mesmerize. Uh, so that's his. Oh, this is his uh, champion power, by the way. So he gets to draw a card, and it costs all five of those. I have enough to give one of my guys flying. There's no real need for me to do that yet. Let's see if we get something interesting. If we don't get anything really good, I'm going to Buccaneer. Uh, yeah. So I'm going to Buccaneer uh, these seagulls so that they cannot block. And then I'm also going to... Oh, why can't I do that? Oh, well, I'll have to do a second main phase then. Uh, then I'm going to mesmerize one of these other seagulls that they'll never be able to untap, so I don't have to deal with them as much. 
And now, so next turn, like you'll see, you'll see why this uh, buccaneer is really so good. It's because now, uh, he if he wants to replay this stupid seagull from his hand, it's not going to cost three, and that's going to leave him with, even if he draws a land, it's going to only leave him with two uh, left over, so there's not a whole lot that he can do. And I still have a buccaneer uh, to maybe stop a blocker or something. I just really hate these seagulls, they're very annoying. It's also very good that he hasn't gotten any of his specters in his deck because those are those are really good and they'd, they'd be changing the game right now. So we gotta we gotta hope that we start getting them before he does. Yep, there we go. So now these are his seagulls that cost three. Good for him. Uh, this is some sort of uh, glitch where the power and toughness are super close together. So that's a small bug. It doesn't affect the card. I know it looks like a 10, but trust me, it's still just a stupid seagull. And I'll keep swinging with this because really I don't care if we trade at this point. Uh, I'm much more scared of him having them in his deck than I want mine in mine. Because they'll help him come back from this because I'm, I'm winning. Uh, they'll help him. They'll help him come back from this, and uh, mine will basically just help me win faster. So I'd I'm, I'd be very happy to trade these right now. So he has two of these guys to block with, so he'd be blocking my two strongest. So I'll only be able to get three through a turn now. <coughs> Ah, there we go. So this guy, this is our Spectre, so this is what I was talking about all game. These guys are two twos for one, and I get to draw a card, so they're really good. So now I have more threats on the board. He gets to draw me a card. And it's another Ancestor Chosen. So we got... We're making moves now, people. So I'm going to Buccaneer. I'm going to play Buccaneer on the same stupid seagull that I did last time. So now this stupid seagull is going to cost four. And I hope he hates it. So here we are. We're going to swing in with all these guys. Everybody that we can, anyway. He'll be able to block one with the seagull. Uh, and I hope to God that he trades with this specter. Because I don't want any more of these specters in any of the decks. And now, as you see, we're out of cards. He sees that... There we are. So he is going to trade. So that's good. I'm actually I'm very happy for that. I got my Spectre out of it, so I'm one Spectre ahead. Wait, what happened? Oh, that's right. I already I forgot I had two of these. So now I'm now I'm in really good shape. I'm basically a total boss. Actually, this guy is. So now, hopefully, he's realizing uh, what I've been telling you this whole game, which is that these seagulls are so frickin' stupid. So here we are. Now we have three seagulls. Now, would you rather have three seagulls, or would you rather have three things that can attack? Like, I get it. I get the appeal of two seagulls. I really do. But he could have had three things that would actually help him win the game, and I just have all this stuff. So, look, here we are. So this stupid frickin' seagull costs four, for a zero one troop that can just block crap. Look at all this crap I had. Everything everything attacks for two, that's nothing. So like so now this piece of crap seagull is now gonna cost five. So this schmuck is gonna have to pay all of his resources to play this stupid seagull. Oh, see? He is so mad that that seagull's gonna cost five that he quit. And we won the game. Okay. So uh basically buy this game, this game is totally sweet. Uh, make a deck, and whenever you do, it'll play with any stupid seagulls in it.